that's it. That's it. I used to rap when I was a kid. I used to rap, you know, at the beginning of my show, that's me rapping. That's like an old song from 10 yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah. That I incorporated. I always wanted to be a rapper, so now I get to use my voice. Oh, friend. <laughs> you use my voice with you the podcast. Yeah, that's And, dope. Um, you know. Because I talk about a little bit, I ain't gonna cry back. You, I ain't got no she tears cried yesterday today. in the middle of us. Cry? Yeah, because yeah. we were doing an introduction of who we are. Yeah. And it what was our a lot. Is I mean, it was a great feeling and joy. And I'm just like, oh, our world is not here yeah, to yeah, yeah. experience this with this. us. So she broke the um, so, so I got her back. I was like, I got you. I got yeah, you. it was good. I ain't gonna cry back, though. Mm-mm. Man, listen, Today, mm-hmm. we don't have any napkins, so, so if you, you cry, you, you, you I'm on you. Got to do the air but feel it's free. You. I got time for that Feel today. free. You know, we, I love a good tearjerker. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wrong with that. Uh-huh. Turn my mic up. For you. Take there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the road to the riches. Life takes a toll like bridges. Good friends become foes and snitches. Better watch who knows in your business. business, business. All right, all right, all right, Hustle Fam, Hustle Fam. We are back with another amazing episode, and I have the ladies, the lovely ladies of LLG Transportation. What's up, y'all? What's up? Did y'all, y'all, y'all do that in perfect, perfect unison. Did y'all, did y'all practice that? No. no. Which is always insane. It happens like that. Our brain is just that strong. That's right. It surely is. You know, everything from the no and everything's like perfect. Y'all like a singing group. It was good, man. L- long time coming, man. So yes. happy to finally get y'all, get y'all here on Truck and Hustle. Absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt. Uh, y'all gonna stop talking about the same exact time. We literally not trying to do yeah, that. Yeah, y'all, y'all killing me. Y'all, y'all killing me. All right, all right. All right. So let's get into that. Y'all are the, the compliance experts right yeah, talk sorry. about trucking talk about compliance um but you guys have a deep history in transportation right uh, kind of second generation trucking so we're going to talk about all that first of all so the audience knows put some context around the conversation what does llg do talk talk about it and, and let's start yes well, absolutely. Well, first introduce yourselves absolutely. first of all absolutely my name is leticia i am one of the l's in llg transportation consultant and i'm with Shanta. i'm the other l and then the g in the business everybody asks what is llg so llg stands for leticia Lashanta, and gregory um gregory is our deceased brother so he was literally right in the middle between mm-hmm. both of us. Um, she's 33, he would have been 32, and I'm 31. Okay. So um, when we decided to start our business, we was like, you know what, we gotta keep our brother name alive, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he passed from childhood cancer when he was about 14, 15 years old. Right. And so we were like, you know what, we gotta do it for him as well. Also, we like to say that the G in our company name also stands for our father as well, Gregory, okay. um, because without him, like we wouldn't know anything about this business. So that's what LLG stands for. And who are we, what are we doing? So the people like to call us the compliance queens um, because we don't just start companies and things like that. We talk about compliance, educating everybody about it, um, every aspect of compliance. And so, yeah, that's what we do. We help people start their trucking companies, but we, Make sure you guys are running in compliance and that you're aware of all of the rules and regulations when it comes to your company. Okay, got okay. you. So compliance, a very important part That's right. of trucking, transportation, and business in general. Right, you said you help people start their company. Mm-hmm. So that's everything from what? Talk about what you help them get started. So that's everything from doing their MC applications, the USDOT numbers, the heavy vehicle use tax, quarterly taxes such as the IFTA, mm-hmm. um, factoring, um, as far as the compliance size, the audit prep folders, uh, the, D, the DQ files, and the drug and alcohol consortium. So all of those things, mm-hmm. um, yes, that it's we consist of. It's yes, uh, you know, we're transitioning more into our courses and trainings, um, trying to teach people, blah, <laughs> teach people exactly what we do. Okay. Um, so they can know, or if they have a partner or anything of that nature, if they need to teach them or if they need to work for them, they'll be able to do so. They don't have to outsource it to anyone else. So Okay, okay. Yeah. So to date, how many uh, trucking companies have you guys helped get started? 95. 95. 95. So we have started 95 companies as of today from November 2020. So we've only been in business for about, ten what, months. 10 months or so? 10, ten months. months. And you've already started uh, almost 100 companies. That's right. That's our goal. Wow, that is our goal. Thank you yeah. so much. Yes, yes. <laughs> wow, that is a, that's huge, man. So nice. So we five away. Yeah, that's well, right. we're technically four away because we have an order that is just sitting there that we got to start fulfilling. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. All right. Thank so you. let's talk about how you guys got started in trucking, why trucking. Um, talk about your backstory a little bit. Where are you guys from? 
<laughs> so we are from a little okay we're originally from birmingham alabama okay birmingham. the ham as people say the um, ham. yes that's okay. where we were born but we were actually raised in when we say <laughs> southern country part of alabama it's called alberta alabama it's really alberta? yes okay. it's really known for the freedom quitting be uh where our uh, ancestors and stuff they quit it a lot of quilts and they're in museums and things like that um, and then we grew uh, we graduated from Selma Selma High um, so you know MLK marched and crossed the bridge so Selma, yeah. we are deeply rooted in our history and so mm. we come from a small um, county where there's literally no Walmart no McDonald's you either have the Piggly Wiggly or um, Piggly Dollar General you know that's um, real? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it still exists. Wow. Um, and to this day, the county still doesn't have one. So we come literally 32 to 45 miles like, to get to school right on the bus. If you miss the bus, you just have to go to school. Um, <laughs> okay. So we come from Alabama. We're good Southern sweet girls. Um, and our father, he was born in Birmingham, and that's how we got our Birmingham connection. So he okay. has been in the industry for over 30 years. Literally when she was born he had just started driving dump trucks and things like that and so okay. he has actually been on his own trucking company a motor uh, motor carrier owner operator for about 20 years now um, really yes and okay. so we grew not up not dump trucks anymore though right? no 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 he transitioned from dump trucks and into uh working for wall pools mm -hmm. cement trucks things like that for the city of birmingham and then he went on to flatbed flatbed was his love was his love he did okay. flatbed for probably about uh, I would say 12 to 13 mm -hmm. years up until recently where, you know, as he got older, he's like, oh, I can't get that scrap in the tarping. So he trans uh, transitioned over to dry van. Okay. But yeah, he has been doing this thing for a while. So we grew up in the truck, like literally every summer on the road with our dad, like riding, just learning. And he's a teacher. Okay. He will literally, if you ask him a question, he's going to give you all of the details. And so we were learning about it and growing up in it. But guess what? <laughs> He used to tell us, get your CDL. We would say, I don't want no trucks. I want my CDL. I want to do nothing with the truck. Right, 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 right. right. And, uh, but look at us now. <laughs> yeah, he got you. Yes, he did. He got you. He was onto yes, something. He planted, he planted he that something seed. something that we didn't know. That's yes. right. Yeah, so, so, so you said he's had his company for 20-something years? Mm -hmm. And is he had, like, multiple trucks or just one truck and he's a driver? How does how his so company... So he... He was having a hard time with getting other people to come into the business with him. Okay. Right. And so he didn't want Why? to manage because um, of the family and the friends and things like that. Everybody was more so just on, I'm just going to do it on my own. Right. Okay. Nobody wanted to come together. And then also, we didn't have an interest in it either. Okay. So his goal, the name of his company is Father and Son Trucking. Okay. It was with the hopes that my brother, our deceased brother, oh, his wow. only son, was going to continue that legacy with him. Right. Wow. wow. And so, um, we just wasn't interested. It was hard to get other people to be interested in what he was doing because a lot of people didn't like being truck drivers and things like that. They kind of looked down on drivers uh, up until now when social media made it popular, right? right, right, right. And so um, he just didn't have a lot of people that was willing to invest with him. And okay. so he was, he's a humble guy. He's like, I'm making my money. My kids are taken care of. I don't have to have this lavish lifestyle, all of these trucks, because he saw also a lot of his friends have trucks. Mm -hmm. And they're just sitting, mm. you know? And so it was also, I think, the lack of support, the lack of education about how to scale his company. Yeah. Um, and when we started getting into this thing, now it's like, okay, I got some help. They actually understand and they can help me to grow it. So he, he remained one to two trucks in that in that range, right? right? right. Um, multiple trailers, but one to two trucks. Gotcha. Um, and depending on the season, because he's in Ohio, he'll go from flatbed to drive in, depending on the season and things like that. Okay, so he has, he has two trailers, mm -hmm. or, so he'll go from yes. flatbedded, so mm -hmm. so he's pretty much over the road all the time, all yes. year round, basically like living in a truck for the most part? No. Okay. No, he, he kind of like scaled down a little bit now. Okay. Because um, he's he, done that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like he's done done that. That. yeah. That has money, so yeah. right. he don't have to be out there like, yeah, you, yeah, get yeah. With, you know, get it and you got when some he money. get ready, yeah. he goes, you know, <laughs> he gets out of being at home. Yeah, yeah he's uh, he, he goes, goes out. 
a go getter. So, so he kind of does it like more so at his leisure. At his leisure now. Absolutely. Yeah. If he wants to take a, uh, a trip to Texas to, um, to come see us, that's like the furthest that he's going to go, or down to Alabama, from Ohio to Texas, Ohio to Alabama. But okay. most of the time, dad is running over to New York because he's in Cleveland, over to Pennsylvania, you know, mm -hmm. Indiana. But right. he's not going out three, four days at a time. He really doesn't have to at yeah. this point. Gotcha. Because he have more direct contacts and connections. Yeah, because he's point, been so. in the in the game for so yeah. long that, you gotcha. know, he doesn't so he, have to be on the road. call his guy and say, hey, man, listen, I want to take his They definitely call and, him. And he's ready to go. And yes. he, can, he knows what he wants to make per year yes. and all that. And he's comfortable. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. I love that. So at what point did you guys know that you wanted to get into this game? And, and how did you kind of get into it? How did you get started? Well, <laughs> I think for me, more so, eventually it came along the time where we was helping other people um, in the industry. You know, we was doing some dispatch. A lot of people don't know. We did a little bit of dispatching um, for a few of our friends that we know for a little bit. And it was like, hmm, I don't know if I really want to do the dispatching side because it's tedious. It's good, you know, it's good money Demanding. involved, but it's very tedious work yeah. um, involved with it. So just helping other people um, in the industry, mm -hmm. it was like, hmm. For me, I always wanted to be a business owner, just yeah. understanding and figure out what, what direction I really want to go in. Right. Um, so a lot of people don't know, I'm more so the accounting side, financials. Okay. Um, that's my background. Yes, okay. So the business, you know, of the, the, day, yes, the yeah. operations of the business. Yeah. Um, so that's more so my background. Okay. So in this thing, uh, coming to the logistics side, it was a little different for me. Of course, but um, that's why we feel like we work really well together yeah. because, of course, my sister's more so the logistics and I'm the accounting side. However, I do understand the logistics, if that makes sense. No, so if someone, understood. you know, comes to me, I know. <laughs> so, so you say you started out dispatching. Who are you dispatching for? So just a few friends that we may have known of um, who came to us and like, hey, and also just helping them with their back office paperwork. Okay. Things of that nature as well. Family too. Okay. Um, of course, they knew that we knew a little bit more about it and things of that nature. So kind of just helping them um, get into it and do a little dispatching for them. Um, we have we were dealing with more people. I feel like in the car hauling. Okay. Car hauling. So Which we need a lot of like um, dispatch. Yes, yeah, <laughs> because car hauling is a different beast. Okay. Um, it's not difficult, but you gotta you may have to get a car here, get a car there, but make it a combo where they can make their stops in one sink. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it won't be all over the place. Okay. So that's what we dispatch more on the side of. Okay. Um, we feel like a lot of people do sleep on car hauling. But car hauling is um, very, very, you know, very lucrative. Yes. Uh, they make a lot of money uh, okay. with car hauling and stuff. But, but it's very overwhelming. <laughs> it, it is very overwhelming, um, especially when it boils down to nine cars and things of that nature. Because the more and more money they make, the more the bigger the trailers get, and they want to do the nine car the nine car hauling. Yeah. You know, because that's more money. Yeah. Each car you could be two to three hundred dollars each. More. Mm -hmm. So, so you guys, you guys started doing this together, the dispatching mm -hmm. for the car hauling. Yes. So these, these were like, like friends and family, yes. you said. Yes. So they were just kind of like, like, you, did you reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? Like, how did you even make that connection? Well, um, it happened when we were kind of, I was kind of like transitioning in my life, and um, my cousin just, he's like. I knew, I always knew like logistics without knowing how much I knew, you know, mm -hmm. just from previous experience as far as jobs and things like that. And so I was like, okay, I can come up here on the weekend, get your back office paperwork and stuff together, show your wife how to put this together. Right. Um, and then it was like, well, have you considered dispatch? And I was like, I can find loads, you know? And so we, it went from like, yeah, I'll just help you find a couple of loads and stuff like that. Because at the time, like, our cousin, he didn't have anybody dispatching. He was trying to do it all, and I think he had three or four trucks. Okay. And so um, it just jumped in like, okay, I can help you. I just need some extra money, whatever, you okay. know. And then it was like, wait a minute. When we when I moved out to Dallas, we ran across another guy um, that we know from back home. He had got car haulers, and he had pulled all his money out of the um, his military pension okay. and invested in buying these trailers and stuff. And he was really struggling. And his okay. dispatcher and his back office person disappeared one day. Mm. And so uh, we had been talking to him because at this point we knew we wanted to get into trucking. So we had started surveying people that we knew who were in the trucking industry, asking them, what do you have issues with? What's the hardest part about being an owner operator or motor carrier as a small individual person? And right. then they were telling us it's the back office support, it's the dispatch. And so that's how we jumped into, okay, we're going to dispatch with him. We were through into that situation with him, right? With the car hauling and things like that. And then I think he had three or four trucks, brand new, came from the military, no 
trucking experience at all. Right. And he started with four trucks car hauling. Like, right. okay, if you're suicidal, like, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you know? Yeah. But um, he was a very determined person, things like that. And he gave us the opportunity to, to learn and to grow with him as well. So we started dispatching and stuff for him. And then we realized, like, we need to get him dedicated lanes and things like that where we're not having to put the puzzle pieces together so much. We can just say, hey, they got 10 for you over here or 9 for you over here. Go pick them up. Okay, got you. All right, so you, you you're working with family. Mm -hmm. You start. You guys start dispatching. You start. You you figure out what the pain points are that you know they're having, and you yes. like we need to become the solution for these Absolutely. pain points, right? So you said compliance was another thing, right? So mm -hmm. how how do you make that transition from leaving the dispatch side and getting into like the other back office stuff, or do you leave the dispatch side? Like how does how do you ch turn into LLG now? Let's yes. talk about that. So at that point, I had moved to Texas with her because we knew it was more opportunities. Like she said, we always wanted to be entrepreneurs. Okay. We just didn't know exactly. We tried everything, right? And so why'd you be entrepreneurs? Um, just what was I've your always reason? desired to be an entrepreneur. I knew. Um, even from working in as a loan officer and things of that nature, I knew the nine to five life was never for me. Um, I just didn't understand how I would get there. Mm -hmm. What would my entrepreneurial life look like? Now, I understand, oh, this is a lot. <laughs> right. This is a lot. Right. But um, I don't know. And, and the funny part about it, even though my father is an entrepreneur, of course, yeah. um, but, you know, we didn't come from really an entrepreneur uh, background. Yeah. Um, but I just think it was always instilled in me what and I always, I feel like was ahead of my time, if mm, that makes sense. Mm. Um, so I've always seen, you know, what that looked like. Uh, I like that. I like, like that boss, that dominance. Right. You, um, you of like the, the feeling of it. Absolutely. Right. So I knew I was never going to be satisfied with just a paycheck every two weeks, mm. um, depending on a 401k that I may never even get to $100,000, you know. So I understood the assignment a, a long time ago, and I knew eventually I would transition to be an entrepreneur, just didn't know when I would start my own business. Okay. So um, I feel like just moving to Texas, I've been in Texas about five years now, but I literally dropped everything in, in Alabama, and I left. Okay. Um, after I graduated and things of that nature. And um, that was my beginning of, okay, this is your new life. You're probably going to have to work a little bit more because you're not rich. <laughs> so you need to work. And But then as we started thinking. Um, Meeting people. Absolutely. So, you know, we started our business back in January of 2019. Yes. So we registered the business and we never launched the business. So we knew eventually it would start, but we was not ready at that particular time. Okay. So just getting more and in, you know into it and understanding the business, what system we need in place, understanding exactly what people need, their wants, um, just to go forth with it. When when you started the business, yes. what services <clears throat> were you guys uh, offering? So I would say um, going back a little bit, Ramil, is that. Um, so when we went from, okay, I'm just going to help him on the weekend, get some paperwork still. And then it went to, okay, we have um, a friend in Texas and stuff. We're dispatching for them and stuff. Um, at that point, we started recognizing the need as we're working with these people, just really helping them out. And so that was like 2018, okay. right? So by the end of 2018, we saw one we don't like to dispatch. Even though we know how, <laughs> right. I don't like it. I don't like to be on the phone. Don't call me. I'm sorry. I love y'all, right. but I don't like y'all. Right. So, <laughs> so then um, I remember in one of your podcasts, you said, um, if you can find the problem in the industry and you can become the solution, then you will have a successful business. Mm. Something of that nature, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So find your niche, right? And um, when we started noticing that, you know, a lot of people had this problem where they weren't organized. They didn't know the rules and the regulations and stuff. In 2019, we said, we know what we're going to do. Mm. We're going to become a, con uh, uh, a consultation like so, firm. Yeah. We're going to be able to do back office support for them, take that problem away from them, and they can trust us to get it done. So 2019, we jump into, let's go ahead and get the LLC, get the business formatted. Okay. But we slept. We, we, we sat there and we, um, we sat down um, on it for a while and it really wasn't sleeping. It was just understanding the seasons of our life that we were in, okay. positioning ourselves to be able to, when we stepped out here, we stepped. Everybody's like, whoa, where did they come from? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, because yeah. we didn't we didn't ease on the scene. Like we jumped yeah, on the scene yeah, and we, we, we came yeah. in hard because <laughs> we had spent a lot of time planning and investing, studying and learning and researching. So when we came on the scene, we made an impact. And mm. so that's where the compliance part came around. Um, we started realizing not only do people need help with 
back office support, mm -hmm. they really don't understand the rules and the regulations. Right. They really don't until it's that, uh-oh, like I got this fine. Uh-oh, I got this penalty. Uh-oh, I'm put out of service. And so that's when we were like, you know what? Um, what we envisioned for the company originally has expanded a hundred times. Mm. What did you guys do? Because you said you, you started researching, you started investing in yourselves. What, were you, what did you do for your education for yourselves to learn you know, about compliance, like where, where, what were your resources? Where did you go yes. to prepare? So funny thing is, like she said, I'm, I'm more of the logistics than the background and things mm -hmm. like that. And so um, I was working a job that was really a good job for, you know, just a good job, that's yeah. it. Um, and then I remember telling her like, I need more money, I need something else, this is not it because where I'm at now, this job ain't gonna position me to get into the trucking industry and the things that we really wanna do with our business. Right. And so I took a job at a fireworks company, at a special effects and fireworks, fireworks. company. Okay. And so okay. imagine me telling my dad and my sister them that, hey, I'm leaving this job at a dock door equipment company. Okay. Right. I was the dispatcher there. Okay. Um, to go and work for a fireworks company. It's like, you know that they only do that on during the fourth of July, right? <laughs> right, right, right. And I was saying, no, like the company I work for, we do special effects for the Texas Rangers, all of the colleges and weddings and everything. It's year round. But the reason why I took that position is because there was like a ten percent of my job that was um, HR manager, 10% of it was DOT. Okay. And I was like, I can, I can, I need that 10%, right? So it was DOT in a fireworks company? Yeah, because it's hazardous okay. material. Ah, okay. So now I go into the, um, into this position, even though I'm a production manager, I'm responsible for scheduling. I'm a, now I'm responsible for onboarding, hiring the drivers and all of the things. And guess what? There's rules and regulations that go with that. Right. Right. And so now I'm learning all the rules and the regulations and I'm doing it at this company in um, the position I was working for. I was self-taught. Yeah. The FMCSA website, I know it like my Bible. Yeah. Because I was literally going to the office, give those people two hours, I'm sorry, two hours of my day. But it was time for me to start investing into what was going to get us where we needed to be. I was uh, ready to start taking care and taking those steps to get me, my sister, our family, our brand where we needed to be. So I started self-educating. So I was going to YouTube. You know, everybody okay. went to YouTube University. <laughs> YouTube show, University, yeah. Right? Um, but then I was also finding conflicting information mm, on YouTube. Like, and I, like um, you'll have one person talking about you don't need a CDL for this type of truck. And then you'll have another person say you do need to see the CDL for this truck. You have one person say you don't need EFTA for this. And it was just like, wait a minute, who knows what they're talking about, right. okay? So at this point, um, the research became, I'm not going by what they say, or he said, or a video, or what they're saying at the truck stop. I'm gonna call directly to the departments that's over this. I'm gonna go directly to the to the websites. And so I would go directly to the FMCSA website. I'll open up the rules and regulations. I will read it myself. So that when someone say, well, how do you know that? Or I can reference like section 392.81 subsection B, mm. like go and check that out. Mm. Um, and then we went a little bit further with, um, you know, calling the Department of Revenues and understanding like, what is this tax? Um, who is responsible for paying this? Okay, what is the rules and the regulations surrounding this? And literally it was just a lot of phone calls and the one thing that people don't like to do, reading. Mm -hmm. But I got a I got a whole certificate and like plaque at home for being the person <laughs> in the school who read the most books. So for me, it was like, oh, I just gotta read to find out. Cool. Right. But I was willing to put in that work to be able to research and I didn't want to go off of what other people said, right? And so even though our father had been in this thing, he was just getting by by the grace of God. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know right. what I'm saying? Like a lot of and people. So, mm -hmm. Yes. And so even though he has knowledge of the industry, he doesn't have knowledge of the rules right. and the regulations, right? And so uh, that's how how, how much how much money do people lose or leave on the table because of their lack of knowledge of compliance? Wow. Tons and tons. Um, Absolutely. You know, even our own father, when he got audited, it was a $2,500 fine for his IRP and his IFTA because they were just like, I think I drove 92 miles here and 59, you know, here. Um, and for instance, with KYU, the Kentucky weight distance permit, just by you not knowing, you can lose $500 just like that. Right. Mm. And so what does that, how, how, can you explain that again? Yeah. So with how the, does that work? Um, New York. Kentucky, New Mexico, Oregon, they have special weight distance taxes outside of like your 
uh, international fuel taxes, right? And so even though you may not have transported or ran through that state, you are still required to report zero miles. Failing to report zero miles can cost you $500. It will cost you. It ain't no can. It will <laughs> right. cost you $500, right, right? Right. Because it's a tax. And so it's just like with your business tax. Mm -hmm. If you don't report anything, they're like, oh, okay, so you hide the money or what, what's going on, mm. right? And so it's small things like that. We get calls where people are stuck at the way station trying to get out of New Mexico, you know, at Kentucky because they didn't know that they needed a weight distance permit on top of all of the other things, the MC number, USDOT number. And now it's like, oh, crap. My load is delayed. My driver is frustrated. Now they're inspecting my truck. Now I got more expenses and, and things because of violations and fines and fees that I wasn't aware of. Whereas if I would have just, and guess what? A, a, a lot of these permits and registrations, mm -hmm. they're free. It don't cost you to sign up for them. Right. Right. Uh, it costs you if you use us because we're providing you a service, but a lot of them, they don't cost you. And so it's worth it to go ahead and get that account established and have it just in case you need to go through Kentucky. A lot of people don't like to go to New York, but we always tell them, get the permit and the account established so that if you do decide to go through there, you don't have to worry about anything. So it can literally, they start from $500 and we've seen, we've had a client come on and do a testimonial with us. They got audited $12,000. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. 12,000. What, what was that for? No out driver qualification. Yeah, out of compliance. They didn't have driver qualification files. No oh, no, files. no, no, no. It was no IFTA. They didn't have any IFTA. Mm -hmm. So, an uh, IFTA account. And so, him and his dad had been running for a while. Mm. And when they hit him, they, I said they was just sitting back there waiting on y'all. Right. Like, just, we see y'all. Just like ours. And, yeah. and, and when you get these fines, how long do you have to, to pay them or take care of the fines? It depends on what type of fine. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, um, you know, you got to plead with them and say, look, <laughs> give me six months <laughs> or, you know, you set up payment arrangements. But mm -hmm. sometimes these fines like KYU, that's one time payment. They're not going to give you forever to, to pay $500. Right. right? Um, but it just depends on what type of fine it is. But right. it's unnecessary money. Um, and... If you, if you happen to be one of those companies, like we had a client, tell them about, uh, sorry, a client who, <laughs> who um, we'll, we'll take her name out. We'll take her name out. <laughs> but, uh, about, a, about a client who she had just got her authority and wasn't aware of the new entrant audit. Absolutely. So we had a client, um, she wasn't aware, like she said, of the new entrant audit. And what's the new so, entrant audit? Let's so talk about that. So basically a new entrant audit is um, any new owners, operators, in the first 12 months, they are audited. Um, so they have to respond to get a, a letter in the mail, but they do have to respond to that letter um, in a timely manner. If you don't respond, they're going to get you. It's an automatic it's, failure. It's an automatic failure. Because it's a safety audit. So we're assuming that possibly did not happen, that she did not respond to the letter. Also, um, she, was already, she already had her authority, so it was active. And she was thinking, oh, I'm not running, so... You know, I don't have she to think, respond. Yes. Mm. She was thinking in her mind, like, I'm good. But once that authority becomes active, you are liable. You're of required. course, you are, yes, you are required, automatically entered. Um, entered into the audit. So she was audited and ended up having to pay a fine behind it. So yeah. that was very, um, we were glad that came about, of course. So that was very educational for us to let people know, hey, just because you're not running that truck, if you're active it's, with it's, the FMCSA, it's well right. they're, they're on you. Yes. Right. right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And to go into a little bit more detail, um, so let's talk about a person who's in that situation. When she was, there's two types of out of service. You have your out of service as a whole company, meaning nothing can move at all, right? That means your authority is out of service. And then you have an out of service violation on the side of the road. That means that that truck has to stop until that violation gets fixed. But your company as a whole is still up and running. So in this situation, mm -hmm. your company is out of service, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so imagine being, you just got your authority two months in, and now your company is out of service. And guess what? You got to wait 30 days before you can reinstate it. So right. now you have a reinstatement fee and you're still paying insurance and a truck note and potentially still, a, you know, a driver and you're not making any money. Right. right? right. And so these are the losses when it comes to understanding compliance. There is so much more than just, you know, the USDOT and the MC number. People, that's the first phone call you get. Hey, I need my USDOT and my MC <laughs> yeah. number. You know, you need a lot more than that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, that, so for her, 
that can be a potential $10,000 loss right there because you have a month of revenue that you're not getting. Um, you have, you know, your insurance and your truck payment or your rental agreement, whatever it may be. Plus, you got to pay to get reinstated. Yeah. Right. What's and that now, fee? The reinstatement um, so fee. the reinstatement fee is actually only $80. That's not bad. Right. But it also depends on why you're revoked or why you've been placed out of service. Mm. Right. So hers was failing to respond to a new entrant audit. Right. But you have other things where and then there's times where you can't get reinstated. Right. You've lost it all together. You lost the privilege all together. Absolutely. Got you. All right. So you just talked about that. You just now talked about people calling. They're like, I want my DLT number and all that stuff. Let's run us through what we need to kind of get be compliant to start a trucking company. Just for people who are new, kind of just give them an understanding of the paperwork that they'll need and what those costs will be. So um, we'll explain mm -hmm. the type of... So the way that we approach the industry mm -hmm. is different. Like there's a lot of people that's just like, we can help you get your authority, right? But there's different types of setups for different types of trucks, right? So mm -hmm. a dump truck would need some of the things that a semi would need, but not all of the things. And so we um, came up with like packages for them. So depending on what type of truck you're starting off with, mm -hmm. it's going to determine what type of um, setup that you need, right? Okay. Um, so the, the basic things are always, you got to have your LLC right. or your business entity, whatever way you choose to do it, right? You'll be surprised. People don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have your EIN, right? You got to have that um, because that goes on all of your paperwork, right? And then you need to have your USDOT number if you are staying within your state. That gives you the authority to stay in your state, okay? If you want to go across state lines, that's where the MC number comes. If that gives you the authority to cross state lines. So at that point, you still have to activate that authority that you just applied for, which comes down to adding a processing agent, which is a legal representative that was just act on your company behalf, make sure you get any notices and things. That has to be on file with the FMCSA, right? Um, people lose their authority because of that. They mm -hmm. get placed out of service because they don't know it's an annual thing or biannual thing that they got to renew with that company. So if you ain't paid for those two years, that company removed their name off of your authority. Now your authority is out of service, right? Right. right. And then um, you also have to have your insurance, mm -hmm. right? Everybody know there's 750,000 general liability insurance that must be on file to activate this authority. So you're looking at, it takes 30 to 45 days to start your trucking company. So for the people who are calling like, I'm ready to go right now, <laughs> we are too, but you got to wait. <laughs> yeah, so those are the basics, as yes. well as the UCR registration. Right. That's an um, annual carrier registration for any motor carrier. It doesn't matter if you are dump truck, uh, um, semi, box truck, or hot shot, right? You have to pay. So all of those are always going to be the same. After that point, it depends on what type of equipment you're going to be operating. Mm. That's where you have to know if you are operating a non-CDL vehicle versus a CDL vehicle, right? Right. And that's where it gets hazy, and that's when the compliance issues becomes to come up, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so you need to understand, like, what is if the if you're required? What is the heavy vehicle use tax if you're required? What are, what is the IRP apportionment place and if you're required to have them? Mm. But the things that people should have in place: policies and procedure manuals, right? You don't go to a company and start working for them and they don't give you some type of handbook, right? Some type of manual for you to understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, they're always going to have that, you know. The prep they, folders. The prep folders. They need to, the way that our prep folders are designed, it doesn't just help you with the audit. It actually gives you organization for your company. Organization is key when right. it comes to any business right. and stuff. Um, they need to also be aware of... Um, the rules and regulations, not just on the federal level, talking about the FMCSA and the USDOT, but also on your state level, right? And each state is different. Each state is different, mm -hmm. right? Each state have additional taxes, right? Um, additional things that they need to be aware of. But you need to also make sure electronic logging devices and hours of service is like the biggest thing, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're the biggest, like issue when it comes to a roadside inspection and right. people being out of out of compliance or being placed out of com uh, compliance. They need to really understand the driver qualifications. You need to know what it means to have a qualified driver, not just someone who has a CDL, right? Because right? because Tom can have a CDL, but Tom ain't got no sense. He's not qualified. He's on drugs. <laughs> He's, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't have the proper endorsements to operate this vehicle. You need to be aware of all of those things. When we think about compliance, 
we said there's three parts. There's your back office compliance. That's your paperwork, your renewals, all of those things, your registrations. There's vehicle compliance. That's anything from your uh, vehicle markings on the side of your truck to your air brakes, to your lighting, your safety equipment. And then there's also your driver compliance. That's where you're talking about the qualification files and the onboarding and things like that. You have people who are not onboarding their drivers. Right. They're like, you want to work for me? Yes! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, 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 what does like that mean to head. onboard your driver? Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, you are right on the road. <laughs> so, um, they, they'll tell you. I love this. So I can talk I can about tell. this all you the going, time. going in. But, um, so one of the things that we were noticing, um, let me tell you what I did. Because <laughs> I always, if I want to know, I want to go to the source. And so, when I got my CDL and stuff like that, I'm like, yes, I got my CDL. I was like, oh, you got a CDL? I do. Will you drive a truck? Look yes, at you. Yes, will you sir. Can drive a truck? Yes, I will drive a truck. Okay. okay. Right. Yes, All absolutely. Right. So, right. female drivers, shout out to you guys. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> but she trucking. Yeah, uh, no but she trucking. Um, when I got it, I was still so very lost. I was still so terrified. Even though I had been in the truck with my dad and things like that, I was still so terrified because I got my CDA on my own. I didn't go through a school. Right. And so I learned how to pre-trip and everything on my own. When it took the test, boom, I got it. Okay. Um, but then I was like, I need to know more. I was like, I need to know how to really operate and drive this truck. But I also want to know how the big companies are onboarding and training their drivers. So I went and signed up for a company to do that because they offer 17 days of driver training before they put you on the road. Mm. I sat in that classroom and every day I was texting my sister like, girl, I got some good information. Like, And I wanted to see how the bigger carriers are onboarding their drivers, right? Right. And so, um, and I also wanted to learn how to operate this truck in and out and all parts of it and learn even more compliance. You see, a lot of people are not willing to do that. You got to inconvenience yourself and become uncomfortable because I went all the way to Green Bay, Wisconsin in the winter, in the snow. Mm. You know, I'm talking about 12 degrees and below outside. But it presented us with the opportunity where I gained so much valuable information that now I can come to you if you own a, a company and I can teach you how to onboard your drivers and I can actually implement policies and procedures and things into place to help you as a company and so like driver training and orientation is literally when you are onboarding your drivers there's literally certification statements when you're signing up for your authority that says you will provide driver training and orientation when you're audited doing a DOT audit they want to see what was the training in case of a lawsuit or accident they want to see what type of training did you provide a driver? Not just what the driver said he got, but what did you do as a company, mm -hmm. right? And so now we have put together um, a driver training orientation video that small carriers can get and they can display it and they can show it to their drivers. And that will be a check mark on your audit that you have something in place, right? Mm -hmm. So it goes over the, uh, the EOD requirements, the hours of service. It gives them safety tips when it comes to adverse weather condition. It really breaks down the roles of a driver and all of that. But we have people out here who are not doing it. They are held to the same standards as the bigger carriers. Ah, yeah, it's funny. I was going to say, so is there a difference between a, a big carrier and a small carrier in the way they should operate or the way they should do business? Do they do, do do the smaller carriers get any type of leeway? Is just the same exact same exact the thing. The penalty is the is the same, and if anything, you should mimic your company after the the larger carriers, right? Mm. And so, when it comes to people buying equipment, they say, "Well, what type of truck do you guys recommend? Well, what type of trucks do you see on the on the highway all the time? What are the big companies doing? They're not running around in, in Peter Bells, right? Right. right. Freightliner, you know, um, even the guys who have worked for bigger companies when they come to us we're trying to tell them you work for a mega carrier how did they handle you as a driver did they just say oh you want to work for us here's the keys or did they give you a drug test you know did they give you a uh, random drug test did they onboard you did they verify your previous employer and stuff but these are the same things that you guys have they're not just doing it to do it because it right. could save them money if that was the case they're doing it because it is li uh, literally a law is a requirement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned earlier prep folders. What's in your prep folders? What's that about? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about that. So um, the way that we have our audit prep folders is that, like I said, it's not just for the new entrant audit because you can be audited after that new entrant audit, right? You get a fool out here in a truck who's constantly getting pulled over into the way station. They're going to come to your, your place of business, even if that's your house, and say, we need to see what's going on because, you know, you ha you're hiring Tom, and Tom is just like, 
messing things up. Mm -hmm. And so we developed the folders to be able to help them structure their business. So there's like a company information folder that lists, you know, have a copy of your motor carriage certificate, have a copy of your EIN, all of your stuff like that, your proof of insurance. The auto prep folders are strategically put together to, if you use these templates, and we literally give them the templates. All you got to do is like put your company name in there. Um, all you have to do is update it. We tell them how often they are supposed to update it and everything. If you do this right at the beginning of starting your company, guess what? When the audit comes, it's as easy as click, uh, click here, drag, drop, upload, and you're done. Mm. And so um, that's what it is. And then we also offer audit prep assistance for anybody who purchased the folder, where when they receive their audit, they can schedule one-on-one -on -one with us and we'll go through and explain what the people are asking for. Do you guys uh, sit in on audits for people? Well, so we haven't been in a position where we've had to. <laughs> okay. um, I, I have participated in an audit for the company I was working for. Okay. And I was talking about the CEOs and all of them, they were running around like it was a crazy, like shred everything. <laughs> um, but that, yes, so, yeah, yes. We've experienced audits. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But um, a lot of the audits, the new entrant audits are all electronically. So they never come to you. And so we've been blessed in the companies that we've helped started and the people and the clients that we have, no one has had a DOT audit where they've had to have someone come to their home. Okay, got you. What about ongoing compliance? After you get the company started, what does a company need to do ongoing to keep their companies healthy in terms of compliance? Yes, the quarterly. Absolutely, that was first and foremost. Quarterly taxes, um, that's very important, very key. Um, that people come to you last minute, just like your regular taxes mm -hmm. and stuff like, you know, April 15, they want you to do, no, you know. So the quarterly taxes, I feel, is um, super important, super key um, as far as ongoing. That never stops. Of yeah. course, the annual filings, things of that nature that comes around um, the vehicle. every year. Go ahead. The vehicle inspections. Absolutely. You're supposed to do an annual um, vehicle inspection. on, And I'm not talking about a pre-trip inspection. I'm talking about where you go to a certified mechanic. Mm -hmm. You know, those annual inspections. The um, plate renewals, right? You have people, they took advantage of COVID. They were riding <laughs> hot. <laughs> the riding pandemic, dirty. they was riding dirty for a while. Um, but then also when it comes to your drivers um, and things like that, you should always be reevaluating their uh, qualification files. Mm -hmm. And you should be doing ongoing trainings with your drivers as well, right? Mm. So um, if they started, because your company should be constantly growing, so there should be changes. And as those changes are happening, you should be sitting down and having these um, conversations with your drivers and giving them refresher courses and things like that as well. Right. Um, and as an owner, you should be constantly learning more about um, the compliance items in the back office and all of the all of the things as well. And so some of the things ongoing is more than anything, they're always looking at the drivers. Mm -hmm. The drivers, like, are they in compliance? Are they qualified? Are you training them? Because that's who is out there on the front line. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Got you. What are some new things in compliance that's going on, you know, in different changes, new administration that maybe people may not be aware about that you can kind of bring to the table? Like, you know, you know this is something that changed. It is something new. Like, what's some, some new things going on? Clearinghouse? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So it's like, it's one what Clearinghouse is. Yeah, it's okay. what Clearinghouse. So basically the Clearinghouse, um, that's where, uh, as far as third parties, um, employees, things of that nature go into the system. Um, as far as to make sure that their drivers are staying uh, in compliance and things of that nature, following the rules and regulations. Um, as far as doing any queries, things of that nature on the driver for, for the pre-employment, things of that nature. So that's what the system basically is for. The system came around back in, in January, January of 2020. 20, they implemented um, the, the clearinghouse. Yes. Because it's a drug and alcohol yes. database. So if you fail a test now, you you got to go, what I like to call like a rehab. Like, you know, right, right. you have to go and you have to complete a return to duty status. Uh, whereas it used to be I can fail my, my test with, you know, this carrier here. And then I can wait a month, get my system clean. And I can go and jump on into another carrier, right? But I'm still a user of that, of that drug or that alcohol. And so they were like, and it was too many accidents <clears throat> that were happening where they are testing these drivers after the accidents and they're finding cocaine and all type of things in their systems. And right. so they were like, and then those people, 
you know, they leave that company and just go to another one, do it all over again. Mm. So they implemented the drug and alcohol clearinghouse. Right. And as she mentioned, you have to query the drivers now. You have, if they hold a CDL, where in January of 2020, it was just all CDL drivers, class A, had to be in there. Uh, it went into effect January of 2021, where now you can get a violation if your company isn't. A, uh, so they gave us one whole year for everybody to get familiar with it while they were working the system and getting all the kinks out. Right. So it's now, not only drivers, it's companies, it's things of that nature as well. So right. everyone has to be entered into this clearinghouse. Um, <clears throat> even um, like for instance, my guy's about to start, he had to enter into it, but the company has been involved with it. And the sad part about it, a lot of the companies are, are not even aware of what, the uh, what it is. is and you know how to use it and stuff. So when it came about, I feel it threw a lot of people off because not only new people have to get involved, the older individuals Generally have like to get yeah. involved as well. So you know, trying to tr yeah, teach like, a new job, uh, uh, an old dog, new trick. Publishers clearing yes. house. Yes. So <laughs> trying to teach Buying them new tricks was like, you know, it's above me. <laughs> you yes. know, yes. Um, type of thing. So um, it threw a lot of people off. But at the end so, of the day, they had to get. They have the to program. get absolutely into programs. So one of the things um, that she mentioned was in January of 2021, uh, the beginning of this year, it was only class A okay. CDL holders. Now it's class A permit holders as well. So when you get your permit, you have to go and enter into a drug and alcohol pool, which means that you have to pay for that service yourself if you're not getting your permit mm -hmm. through a company. Mm. So they want people in there as soon as they get their permit. Absolutely. Wow. Because that's how serious it is, yes. right? And then another thing that um, is going on now is with the CDLs, the entry level driver training now. It is now going to be mandatory, whereas certain states have implemented this years ago. Uh, for instance, what is entry level driver training? Yeah. When I got my CDL, I got my permit on my own, and then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna rent his truck, I'm gonna teach myself, I'm gonna do all of this, and I'm just gonna go and take the test. There was no documented hours. There was no classroom setting. None of that, right? And then somebody could have hired me the next day and put me in their trucks to start driving, right? right. What? Like, how? <laughs> yeah, see, I don't want to do that. But that's what's happening, which is why we have rollovers and all these accidents. So now they say, you know what? No more getting that CDL on your own um, and stuff like that. Now you're going to have to complete entry-level driver training before. So they added a step between the permit mm -hmm. And the, and the license is entry-level driver training now. Mm. Now you have to go and you have to complete a certain amount of hours uh, behind the wheel, like training and stuff, before you can even go and take the actual uh, license test. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the hope is to, mm -hmm. to keep and reduce people from getting behind the wheel that's inexperienced because right. it's happening. Yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. there's always new changes that are going on with... Um, and as you can notice, everything is surrounding the driver, the drivers. which means that the motor carrier, since you're employing those drivers, you have to be aware of these things because it's going to cost your company. So yeah. So how, how has all this impacted people's companies, businesses with all these new driver, uh, uh, I guess, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not restrictions, but all these new kind of rules like, around yeah, and barriers uh, around and things, yeah, barriers around and hurdles, drivers. Yeah. How, Cause you're, you're working with 95 companies now, right? What's right. the feedback that you're getting? Um, a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people may be getting discouraged behind it. Um, because either, it's another step. Absolutely. <laughs> um, potentially out of service, uh, things of that nature, because they're not complying with the new rules and regulations that are happening going on. So, you know, feeling discouraged, the out of service potentially um, behind it. This is something totally new for them, you right. know? Um, so it's a lot to adjust. Um, a lot of people are not uh, being accountable, you know, holding themselves accountable for it. So they are, it's throwing them off, you know, pretty yeah. much. But at the end of the day, um, this is it. This is a new set of rules mm -hmm. they have to follow. If you're gonna continue to drive that truck, you have to follow these rules and regulations. So um, again, a lot of them are just, being uh, at a discomfort behind yeah. it. I and feel. financially impacted because Absolutely. now I have to pay it's someone more money for every drug test for, and then what if what if I hire somebody this week and I go through all of that, I do the clearing house, I got them drug tested, and he only worked for me two weeks. I had to turn around and do this whole thing again right. because I have to so have a drug burden. and alcohol consortium on file mm -hmm. in the clearing house. So, uh, for instance, we, shameless plug, work with Poke Medical Testing Solutions, right? There are 
um, drug and alcohol consortium nationwide for all of our clients. Okay. And so for every client that comes through us, they have they're signing on with their company, and that's anywhere the enrollment. Now they're less expensive than some of these other bigger companies. Right. Can you um, explain what the Drug and Alcohol Consortium is? Yes. So the Drug and Alcohol Consortium is basically, they're the people that are going to be over your drug testing. So you have a drug testing site like Concentra um, or LabCorp. That's where they go and they actually take the collections. But the consortium is actually the representative for your company that organizes your drug and alcohol policy. They do the random selection of the drivers. They also um, do your pre-employment testing and things like that. So they're the organization in your company that will basically set everything up mm -hmm. and monitor it and report to you and let you know, hey, this driver tested negative um, or this driver is good to go. Mm. So that's what a consortium is. So okay. you have to have that connected with your clearinghouse. There's a yeah, spot in there as you're right. registering mm -hmm. for your clearinghouse where you have to designate what company mm -hmm. It's going to be your consortium. And then the issue is that people are just going in there selecting companies and then they're getting rejected. And it was like, well, I want them to be my company. Well, you haven't paid for their services. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, absolutely. So it's financially impacting them because once again, here's another, here's another um Another expense, Another expense. Right? right? And so when you're talking about starting a trucking company, we got to look, and people are saying they're making tons and tons of money, but the bigger your company grows, the more taxes you pay. And we're not talking about federal taxes as far as your, you know, we're talking about quarterly taxes. We're right. talking about, you know, heavy highway use taxes and things like that. And now I got more drivers to drug test. I have more driver qualification files to complete. And so all of that comes from your bottom line. So how profitable is your company? Right, right, right. There's a there's a 80% or more failure rate right now, right, in, in trucking companies. The companies that you've been working with, have you seen anybody go out of business? <laughs> Um, loser. Yeah, um, I say we've we've experienced so far like one person literally recently, you yeah. know, came to us. Um, they are lit they already are active and everything, but the they truck. gave up. They, the little, truck. they gave up. They gave up. Um, I think a lot of people fail to understand who they're doing business with. Um, at the end of the day, because th to me, that can make or break your company. And it did. <laughs> um, so, you know, I know a lot of people want to get drivers and things of that nature uh, with their companies and stuff, but they fail to educate themselves. Um, I feel like a CDL is very important and things of nature because if that if that deal doesn't go right, you don't want your your business to fold based on someone else's uh, performance. Right. So or lack um, of performance. absolutely. So. Basically, yeah, we've seen that happen very yeah. recently. I, um, they just, to me, gave up, you know, very quickly and, and too easy mm -hmm. um, because they have failed to continuously educate themselves, um, be in a position where they can handle their company themselves versus depending on someone else's. And gotcha. then out of the 95 companies that we've started, our goal is not to just to do these authorities. We want to get you guys on the road. We need you rolling, right? Uh, we don't get any money off it, but we just want your success is our success. Okay. And so out of the 95, I would say about 15 of those companies are at a standstill, right? And we can almost tell from the beginning if someone is going to be successful and if they're going to be able to do this because when we say get a consultation, it's not a selling thing. It's not that we don't want to help you, but we're, we can help you through the consultation. It's easier for us to tell you up front what this process is going to be like, what this process is going to cost you and give you a full understanding, right? Because now we're talking about clearing house. I got to do that. I got to get tags. I got special. And you, like I told you earlier, my goal in a consultation is to overwhelm you. Not to the point that you quit, but to the point that you go home and you really think this thing through before you invest any more money in it, right? Because we have a lot of people, those 15 that are sitting, they're stalling. Some of them don't have the capital. Of course, there's a truck shortage of, as well. So, you know, but then um, a lot of drivers. them, driver shortage, but a lot of them just didn't realize what they were getting into. Mm -hmm. And usually it's directly related to the amount of education and investment they put into educating themselves before they got into the industry. That's the first step. Everybody asks, what's the first part of me getting my um, trucking company? Education. Mm. Educate yourself. Mm. Do, you because, think, do you think people, well, go ahead, finish no, what you were saying. Ahead. Do you think people are starting companies for the wrong reasons? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I don't think people really understand their purpose 
Um, wow. And a lot of people are not passionate about the industry. They see the money, they hear the hype, um, things of that nature. So they really don't understand their vision behind why am I even starting this trucking mm -hmm. company? Um, you know, is it for family? Is it for the lifestyle? What, what, what is, what is your mission? What is your purpose? What is your why behind your company? Um, so I feel like they, they really don't understand the reasoning behind why they're even doing it outside of the money looks good. Um, not understanding and realizing within the first, you know, first year or two, you you're money. getting your money back. You're not making a lot of money right. in the beginning. Right. Um, you know, the money is there, but you're only getting the money back. That you've invested. You know, so <laughs> people go into it, you know, seeing what people already have, not understanding that they probably have put five to 10 years into that business to get to the point where they're able to show, okay, this is what I've gained from my investment. Um, so just the hype behind it, um, not understanding really their purpose and if it's, this is really for them at the end of the day. Yeah. 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 Are, are you guys involved in your dad's business? Um, we are, so with we our got dad, him in compliance. we have him in compliance, <laughs> right? Okay. We got him so, um, dad business doesn't require a lot of hands on because right. dad's been doing it for a while. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? So we're, we're involved in the compliance aspect of it. Right. Um, but we don't have to be hands on in his cause he kind of got that on lock and key. And so we came in at the end of last year and, you know, got them all together, threw some papers away, you know, stuff like that, got him you know, where he, he needed he, to be. He felt like he was the man on the moon. Okay, yeah, yeah. so now mm -hmm. he's telling other people about different you stuff. You want to get clear now. <laughs> yeah, so, You're not you know, in compliance. We like that. We got you together. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. um, but yeah, like she said, there's a lot of people jumping into it for the wrong reasons. And um, this is something that you literally have to understand. And you actually have to give, you have to care about it, right? Yeah. right. Um, because... It, it gets times where you're just like, those are the things that's going to help you when you want to give up, when you when you really have a, a reason behind it. Because we had a lot of people say, oh, I want to do this so that my kids can have something. Okay, hold on to that. Hold on to that. Because it's going to be a time where you're, you're, you're going to break even that week. Mm -hmm. There will be no profit. That's right. Right? That truck is going to go down. You got to hold on to that, that, that permanent thing, not this temporary situation. So, yeah. 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 What's the most difficult part about you guys' job? People don't read. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, I feel like definitely I'm having a patience to, um, because we're dealing with a lot, of, a lot of new people every day. Most of our people that come to us, I'll say 85 to 9% is new. Right. So just having a patience to teach, um, to unlearn a lot of people so they can relearn what's right um, and what's new. Um, so I feel like a lot of just patience. the patience and understanding <laughs> um, with everybody you know and that's just the truth in the matter is so a lot of people can't really do what we do you know because it takes a lot of patience and understanding and they don't want education to deal with it. um they don't read you know well right, right, <laughs> they, right. you know uh -oh. you can put it right in front of them right. and lord knows they're gonna ask you what what, what happened so when do what i get my that? insurance you remember yeah. that nice little timeline that we sent over and gave you dates specifically yeah. with descriptions yes use that yeah, you yeah. know we're overly detailed yeah we're and we put detailed. systems in place on purpose like and we're always reinventing our company right so we're always looking at like what is the problem we're running to in our company okay and what's the solution and then boom let's go get the solution if it means like getting a different software getting different communication methods you know whatever it is like a lot of our clients just fail to read and it's not just our clients it's a lot of people they said if you want to hide something hide it in a book mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so um that is the biggest thing is that everybody want to watch it they want to hear it but they don't want to read it right and so yeah. um that is the hardest part and yeah. that creates the frustration which requires the patience because you have to okay yeah, who's <laughs> who's Absolutely. Yeah. professional not personal <laughs> you, you know she's tabitha brown <laughs> I'm Samuel. I'm tired of these damn plane. Like, snakes on this plane. You know, she's just like, hey, guys. Like, yes, like, you have a really good day. Yeah. And I'm like, girl, no. And so it's the um, it's the patient. And what, what's, what's three books or resources that everybody should have at their disposal? Oh, absolutely. A policy and procedure manual, because that's going to help you to understand and structure your business. You should have the FMCSA um, rules the and regulations. <laughs> There's a yes. book, $21 on Amazon. Mm -hmm. It's as big as, you remember when they used to sell those uh, encyclopedias? Mm -hmm. They're big like that, yeah. right? But it literally tells you everything. And then LLG. LLG. They, they, they should have us. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's no, it. No doubt. And, and let's just kind of outline real quick exactly what you guys provide, uh, the resources, the, the kind of the journey that somebody will go through with you guys when they sign up or sign on, or just kind of explain that real fast. Yes. And so... But they, well, we like um, that's respect. You see, yeah, yeah. You, and she okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, feel, I see. It. She so, like, that's love. That's love. Get you know, right. yeah. She's yeah. like, get them, sis. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the way that we're structuring things, and we're getting ready to make a huge change in our business Absolutely. too, because we okay. got a chance to meet with some CEOs recently, and they were just like, we got something. We want to show y'all something. But okay. um, how it works is that we we are advising everybody to do a consultation. Once again, you need to learn before you earn, right? And so um, we. We want to tell you about the mistakes that others have made to help you avoid those. But when you come to us um, and you say, hey, I want to start my trucking company, the first thing is that we're going to set you up. We have like legit a portal for our clients. And so all their documents, they can schedule appointments with us and things like that. We're going to get you to do a consultation. Um, and then it only takes us 24 to 48 hours to turn around any service. Right. And so um, that's what it looks like. You're coming to us. We're setting you up. We're giving you access to your portal. We're completing the services. We're giving you resources and tools for you all to understand what is going on and what steps next and all of these things. And then once you're up and running and things like that, we're passing you over to our partners because we understand the lane that we're in. So we've reached out and we've networked with different partners so that once we get them going, we can structure and, and position them and give them to someone else. So we partner with Miss Jerry with Life on the Road Recruiting. Um, once we get the company going, they need a driver. We don't have time to recruit, yeah. right? But she that's her business. So they go over there. When she gets them a driver, then they go to our drug and alcohol consortium with post medical testing. And then if they need um, a, a dispatcher, then we have Freight Path and uh, Emerald Pride that we send them over to. And so we're literally, we have factoring companies, relationships right. with people, insurance um, companies. And this event we recently attended gave us more access to more people that we can provide um, resources to our client and stuff. And so um, the turnaround time, like we say, for us to complete a service, it's only 48 hours. Now you're in the, you're on another clock with the, the FNCSA. Yes, 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 yes. No, nah, I love it. I love it. Dope, man. So um, th this has been dope, man. Is there anything else that I missed that you guys want to make sure we get out there on this show? Because yeah, I, I we think we covered, covered a lot. Well, go ahead. What yes. Else? Um, I'm going to let her discuss the two things, but also make sure that they pay attention to our resources page. Okay. So we have a wow. resource page um, on our website, which is www.llgtrucking.com. Mm -hmm. okay. So our resources break down the motor carrier checklist, the vehicle markings, end cap checklist, uh, frequently at ask questions, terminology. Um, a lot of people are not aware of terminology of, you know, these different acronyms, because yeah. uh, you know there's a lot yeah, <laughs> in the yeah, trucking yeah. industry. For sure. So we have I'm a lot of that information, um, the way station information that is in our back office. So a lot of people are not aware of that, or I feel like just don't take advantage of it because we're constantly putting it out there, but please take advantage of it. Um, it's out there, it's for free. Uh, we don't charge for any of that stuff because we feel like it's something that needs to be known. Yes. Um, you know, so it's very valuable to people. So that's dope. She's that's gonna dope. speak and on. Where, where can you find that? Great, uh, on the resource uh, page. Yes, yes on, our on our resource. Okay. Yes, on okay. our website. And we're constantly updating information. We have like tax deductions. We have like literally, if you want to know Before what dates. steps you have to yes. complete to start your trucking mm -hmm. company. We have a free checklist, whereas other people are making you purchase a course. We're yeah. giving you the checklist, and we're there. separating it by the type of truck and everything. Uh, like so that. we have tons yes. of resources. Like she said, the important dates and deadlines in trucking, we have that on there. You Dope. can literally go and just download everything and kind of create your own little binder of information. Uh, but we have been working, okay? Yeah. Uh, we have been working tirelessly um, on multiple things. First things is that we're holding our own conference very soon. So we're going to be teaching people. <laughs> Five okay. different ways to get into trucking without a truck. And the reason why we decided to do that is because we do run across individuals like coming where we're from. A lot of people don't have the capital to go out and spend forty thousand dollars on a truck, and then you need at least like eighty thousand dollars, right, to just really jump in this thing and have some comfort. A lot of people don't have that, and we start noticing in this pandemic that people are looking for other ways to get into the industry. Into, and trucking may not be their thing, right? So we're doing a conference in St. Louis because that's where most of our um, clients and stuff are, yeah. um, and our partners are up there as well. So we're doing, and we're going to teach them five ways to get into trucking without a truck. These are going to be all 
things that you can do, businesses that you can run from the comfort of your home, oh. right? And guess what? Each business feed into the other one. So if you can get clientele for one, now you have five like um, services that you can provide them. Mm. So we're talking about multiple streams of income. Could just you run them down for us, real quick? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're going to be teaching you know people go um, how right. to establish a dispatch, a successful dispatching company. Okay. And we're not talking about just like powerpoints, right? Uh, we're going to be teaching them also. We're giving them the blueprint how we did it, like what systems we have in place, like not us particularly, but our partners, uh, Freight right. Path. Okay. And then we're also teaching them driver recruiting. You can do a successful driver recruiting job like business from your home yeah you know because everybody needs drivers right sure. and it doesn't take much um and then we're also going to be teaching people did you know you can start your own drug and alcohol consortium right from your house you really know? yes i'm talking about you can set people <laughs> up to get drug testing so no right from your home okay okay so that's poke medical testing coming in showing people how she got that started Fire. and then we also have um accounting, accounting. <laughs> so my sister she's yes. going to be teaching people how you can do the accounting side for truckers and you don't even have to be a tax accountant because there are certain things like we have you know the truckers are counting and she does tr accounting on a different level but she's going to also show them how to do the day-to-day -day accounting because they need that. Mm. And then, of course, you got us, me, LLG, my sister, back office, back office support and compliance. Yeah. Like, so now can you see if you are dispatching for a person and they need compliance, guess what? You can take care of their compliance. If their driver quit, you can hire them a driver. If you, you're already dispatching for them. And then you can also set up for the driver to be drug tested. Mm. It all goes together. So we're Man. teaching people five ways how like to that. get into trucking okay. without a truck. I like that. And that's in St. Louis when? Missouri. It's in St. Louis, Missouri. October the 30th. Um, tickets are available on our website, but you can also attend virtually um, as well. So we do have virtual options as well. Okay. That's yes. dope. Yes. I love that. Yes. I love that. Really, really. Oh, Yes. Yes. And uh, last thing. Okay. We got more. Yeah. Look, There's more. Yes. More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think this, this is my baby. this is my <laughs> like pride and joy. We have decided to launch not a course, not a class, a university. Okay. So LLG University. Mm. Okay. So what is LLG University? We have heard time and time from our clients, our mentees and things like, I've taken this training over here. It was whack. I took this person course. It was horrible. And it's just like, you never know what you're going to get. It's like, oh, I don't, I want to, I want to learn, but are you really going to teach me? So we got tired of hearing that. It's easy to drop one course. However, we wanted to have one central area where people can come and they can take trainings and courses from trusted individuals, mm. from people who literally care about the content that they're putting out there. And so we decided to partner with um, different people that we respect and yeah. that we've seen who's actually um, doing this. And now we're going to be offering courses on LLG University. So you can learn how to do a back office support business, how to do dispatching, how to do freight brokering, that driver recruiting we were talking about, how to get your CDL as for CDL testing and things like that, a variety, how to start your trucking company, a variety of different services and courses right there. So for instance, if you have your truck and you're like, I'm tired of paying somebody to do my IFCA taxes every quarter, right? I want to learn how to do it myself. You can purchase that individual course, and mm. it's going to be super affordable. And now you know how to do that on your own so that you can keep money inside of your home. So we are so excited. Yes, we so wanted to find, give people, they need a place where they know everything that these women have put together have been good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, and it also provides them with the opportunity to, you know, now you have a mentor that you can go to and things like that as well. And so we are so excited by the end of October, LLG 2.0. 2.0 LLG right. on steroids. <laughs> yes, yes. No doubt, no doubt. All right, well, this has been dope, y'all. Very, very informative. A lot of bombs dropped. I'm so glad we got to, you know, yes. do this in person. Yes, this is, this yes, has really yes. been fun. Um, so we have to end with the final thought. Y'all okay. are, are a, a part of the family, so y'all know the deal, right? Yes, so yes. let's end with the final thought. And lastly, let's let everybody know where they can connect with you, the best places to reach out to you guys. So let's start. You, okay, so my go. final thought is, um, I always say this, like, I'm all about going and get your own. And I always say, uh, position yourself where you don't need anybody, but you respect everybody. And my biggest thing is never give anybody the opportunity to feed you because you also give them the opportunity to starve you, okay? Mm. And so learn 
as much as you can for yourself. Invest in yourself. Love yourself. I'm all about all of that, guys. Yes. I love that. Absolutely. So for me, um, start that thing. Start your business. Whenever you do, just show you care. Um, we need more careness in the world. Um, kindness, things of that nature. Authenticness. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm all about that. Being authentic. Serve with integrity. Things of that nature. Don't be afraid. Just do it. We're all going to you know, have those days where we're not, you know, motivated or anything mm -hmm. like that, but stay encouraged. Um, it's so much, you know, to get out here in this world. It's so much money to make, but make sure whatever you do that you serve with kindness, um, that you care and you're authentic in whatever you do. That's it. And if you guys want to connect with us, yeah, yeah. You can follow us. And if you don't follow us on Instagram, we're really doing yourself a disjustice because we are always going live. Okay. And we're always dropping gems. Um, and we are teaching things that people need to know because that was one of the things that we wanted to. We want to give back as well. And so we always do giveaways as well, uh, promo codes, kind of sort of, and um, things. So connect with us on Instagram or Facebook at LLG transportation consultants you can literally just type in llg will pop up um and we don't have a youtube here, <laughs> but maybe we'll think about getting a youtube um and then also llg university go and check it out see what different resources and things we do have our website is www.llgtrucking.com like she said tons of information and free resources there and we have our business line 1-888-799-3055 no doubt, no doubt, LLG Transportation is in the building. The sisters came to tear it up. That's yes. right. All right, y'all, listen, you know what time it is. If you smell something burning, it's only your desire. Hustle fam, me, LLG, we We're out. If you twisted, confused, or stuck about trucks, don't be dumb. This is the place to come. Truck and Hustle. Let's go.